from Sean, but we've got Robin here as well. Robin, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you. You are, you know, a co-founder of a, um, what, a eight-figure company, uh, and you've given up this time to come and join us. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. I apologize for stumbling late. We were on an engaging call and uh, lost track of time. <laughs> you know no, how that no, no worries. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I, I, I know there's actually um, a lot more than normal going on in your world. So I really appreciate it. I'm actually admiring your, your office. I came to um, high level headquarters in, uh, I think it was August last year and missed you. You were, you were out, but I, but I, 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 I got past your guard and, I uh, got a got a selfie sat 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 in your chair. Uh, oh yeah, uh, they, they um, sent that to me and uh, showed it to me, and they said apparently it's a thing for people to sit in the chair. <laughs> right, wait, I yeah, I think I, I think I made it a thing. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I, I don't know if you have lots of other people who are like, hey, hey, this is this is where high level runs itself. This is where it is. I got I I I got to get a picture there. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um so so we've we, we've got a bunch of people on live with us robin we've got a bunch of people who uh you know gonna gonna watch the replay and all of that um sort of things um so um we're gonna we're gonna go from um there i'd love to ask you a few questions but we're sort of going to um leave it open a bit as well like you know if, if there are certain things that you know um you could or should share with us that would um that would be awesome but i wonder if you could just start a little bit and just uh, lots of people in the, the high level world know um, a lot more about Sean um, than they do about you. So I wonder if you could just um, perhaps um, backtrack a bit and just, you know, explain um, who, who you are, your, your role in, in, the, in the company, how that, how that got started and, you know, that, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, in the quick version of the story is about, you know, 10 years ago or so started a, a marketing agency um, decent size agency, but run into the same problem that every agency has. You, you, you and the team do incredibly hard work in supporting your customers, but they come back and ultimately say you're not doing enough because you're not bringing dollars into their pocket. Um, ultimately, because you're not in their office closing the leads on their behalf. Um, and what we were doing at the time, you know, Facebook ads, Google ads, you know, any sort of lead generation, and you're driving people who are interested in that business. But it was just ultimately not good enough. And so what we ended up doing was um, trying to create, you know, using APIs and Zapier at that time, trying to create automatic text messages just to nudge contacts and conversations over with uh, on behalf of the business. But it was just never enough. And as much as you told the business, look, the reason that you're not growing your business is because you're not doing the job. They didn't care because they wanted to always be the dentist or they just always wanted to be the, the florist or the mechanic or whatever. They didn't want to do sales. Um, and by chance, I actually had a customer who reached out to me saying, hey, there's two guys, they're starting up a software um, in reputation management, but they couldn't figure out how to log in and I didn't have the passwords. Can you call them and uh, get the details to them? Uh, and so I was like, sure, yeah, of course. And so I called them along with my team and uh, you know, happened to be Sean and Varun on the other line and I was helping them get access. And uh, on that call, I was like, hey, while I have you on the call here, um, I had mapped this out on our whiteboard with my team of, or, you know, a cool operation flow for software. What do you guys think it would take? And they gave me the weirdest response. Give us a couple of days. We'll, we'll get back to you. And, you know, I had no idea um, who Sean and Varun were, sort of, you know, kind of the quick intros and what capabilities they could do. And uh, I just kind of blew it off. Like, uh, these guys are going to just give me the runaround, you know, yet again, another uh, dead end. And I'll chase this later. Um, and I've done development in the past. And so I, I know the background and things like that. So um, a couple of days later, I get a random call and I was driving. And I remember I was driving into my office at the time and it was uh, Sean. He's like, hey, dude, hey, this is uh, Sean. You want to jump on a call? I, we want to show you what we've been working on. I was like, wait, who is this again? Why are you calling me? And it took me a while to connect the dots. And um, it, once he kind of re-explained himself and reintroduced himself, I was like, all right, well, give me, you know, about 20 minutes. Let me get into the office and get situated. 20 minutes later, I get into the office and completely blew him off again. And then I get another call from Sean about two to three hours later. He's like, hey, dude, <laughs> you didn't call me back. What's going on? So uh, we get on a call, jump on Zoom, and they had patched together other applications that they built in the past and took different screens and different modals and tried to replicate what I had on the, the whiteboard. And we built out essentially high level 1.0. And, and you know, we did that in a couple of days. 
And at that point I was like, perfect. Well, let me test it out on a couple of our clients and see how it goes. You know, what's the worst that could happen? Um, and we had immediate success. Um, and then from there, um, I just went to the guys like, Hey guys, I think we have something special here. I wanted to use it for all of my clients at the time. You know, we had 200 or so clients that we rolled it out to. Um, and I was like, but I think there's other agencies that could really benefit from this. Can I help you guys get it in the hands of more? And from there, we went out to about 20 agencies that I personally knew that I felt comfortable, you know, kind of in a closed environment, uh, reached out to them. Everyone said yes, but of course, you know, a small percentage of them actually will take action and, and do something with it. So we had about 13 of them and um, all of them loved it. And they all took action and loved the, the product. Um, and they started telling more people about it. And one of those happened to be, you know, uh, a, an agency owner who had recently sold his agency and now is becoming a business coach. And that's Rob Bailey. And he was actually starting um, a mastermind and a live event. And he's like, hey, Robin, hey, Sean, can you guys come out here um, and just show everyone your software? And we just thought we had a 30 minute slot um, literally on the flight there. Um, I'm on the plane building out a landing page, just trying to take orders like, you know, we're, we're scrappy as can be. Um, Sean, it's the first time that Sean and I are meeting in San Diego um, in a hotel room, just trying to figure out how we're going to do the presentation. We're just like, ah, screw it. We're just going to demo the product when our time is up and we'll just call it a day. And it was a fun ride. And Varun, you know, he's in Qatar. So he was on the Zoom. Uh, there's a TV right behind us. And uh, actually on our homepage, if you scroll down to the very bottom, there's still a picture there of Sean and me at that presentation. And Varun was on the, the screen there. We go through the demo. 15, 20 minutes, you know, Sean's rolling really fast. I'm clicking around and, you know, it's like, okay. And we didn't think any, it hit with anybody. Like we just thought maybe it was just a far-fetched idea. Room goes silent for about 10 seconds. And then someone says, hey, I'm looking at your page, you know, the landing page that I built. Do you guys have any annual options where we can get a discount? Can we buy a mobile app? And I was like, uh, and I'm looking at Sean and kind of turn around at Varun and everyone just kind of shrugs and was like, sure. Um, and I just kind of sneak over to the computer and add new products uh, so that people can buy. And that rest of the event really transformed into people wanting access to the app. And uh, one of the funny things is Varun is on you know, the other side of the world on Zoom. He's smiling on camera as if he's attentive. And there's a spreadsheet that we're monitoring all the sales. And he was manually creating login access at the same time, but no one could tell that his hands were moving frantically. And he's sending out emails saying, hey, new account was created, new account was created, new account was created. Um, and so it was just a, a crazy moment. And um, I, I remember clearly that event had about 40 people, about 20 people in the room, 20 people virtually. And I wanna say 39 of the 40 bought immediately and the 40th person came back a week later and uh, was like, uh, I have FOMO, I need to get access to the program. Everyone's talking about it. Um, and from there, we've been uh, word of mouth, growing the business. And, um, you know, we're, we just hit our five-year anniversary, um, representing about 50,000 agencies, which is um, really crazy. Um, that equates to about 500 to 600,000 small businesses around the world. Um, you know, just huge impact. And we wouldn't be here without the agencies that that's really, you know, the army on the ground that's really helping small businesses along the way. That's, a, that's, a, that's incredible. That's an amazing story. I mean, we've been working with you guys for over, over four years, but we weren't, we weren't uh, quite, quite so early in as that. In fact, I was just talking with Amy earlier and she was saying how you actually did her onboarding call, you know, you, yeah, were, you, you, onboarded you, were, in, <laughs> you were, you were in the trenches back in the day. You know, what's funny is we still do those today. Like we still jump on and um, you know, we really do believe in, in the face-to-face -face aspect of it. There's this weird world where, you know, you have software and it's supposed to be as intuitive as possible and self-service self -service as far as getting going into the app. But we know that our product is, you know, 20 different products in one and being able to, you know, piece all of it together takes time and effort. So we still have that motion today. So if you sign up today, you still are talking to a human being and we, we want to onboard you as fast as possible. So, you know, we, we've scaled up our teams. I mean, that team now is at 100 people plus 24 seven. And then, you know, we have more in-depth onboardings, um, but it's the same model that we have today. And uh, what we always did on those calls and what we're still doing today is, hey, do you know two other people that might be interested in this product? And I would just stay on the line until you told me like, yeah, call this person. It's like, all right, can you start an intro text? Can you uh, connect me on Facebook? And that's how we built up our network and uh, it seemed to have worked. Yeah, the, oh, well, I love that. 
<laughs> yeah yeah it's that's it's really cool and i think people listening um to this watching what watching this should be taking that away for for you know all of all of their calls as well that they that they have with people because this is just a quick and a simple way to to start building and scaling yeah no i mean uh birds of a feather flock together and um you know everyone comes up mostly in in our space right like either you're in masterminds together you're going to conferences you, you just know other people that you've networked with and if you found that it thing and we may found you a point of success, it's very easy. You know, you have a smile on your face. You're excited. You see the potential. Um, it's a great opportunity to catch that person to say, hey, do you know two other people? And even if they give you one, that's one more than, you know, one additional contact that you can reach out to. And I would just personally ask for you to uh, start a text message thread and do the introduction or a Facebook message or an email introduction um, as best as I could just to start, you know, keep the momentum going. And it, it turned out to be a twofold exposure rate um, at that point. And it, it just helped us grow like wildfire. That's, that's, that's really, really awesome. So you started, um, you know, um, five years ago ish um, with three of you. Yeah. Now, how, how big, how big is um, high level now? And, and um, how has your role changed um, in, in that? Yeah, um, we are a little over 650 people, 14 wow. plus countries around the world, 24-7. It's super scary. Um, we, we've definitely gotten to a place to where, uh, you know, we had a cool moment earlier this year where we did our annual retreats and, you know, we had our East and West. So at West, we took our team um, and there's people there that didn't know who we were and we didn't know where they were. So we got to meet all interesting Assets, uh, uh, you know, different faces and things like that. And then same thing on the East. Um, so it's scary at, at the same time because uh, you don't know who's representing your brand. Who's, are they at the same level from a culture perspective of representing our customers? Because that's really what it matters. Um, but, you know, we've grown the company very lean and tight and culture, mostly with our original team, which, you know, I'd probably say about 95% of them are still here today. Uh, it's embedded into them of who we are and our mission and they've done an incredible job in passing that down as we've grown our teams there's more managers there's more layers you know to being able to serve as many customers as we have um, as well as our internal teams making sure that they have the support um, our internal managers and leaders that we have have done a great job in just making sure that message translates consistently. Um, that's, a, that, that's awesome and that must be um so difficult to do particularly when you're working across so many countries and cultures as well but i suspect that's also how you've been able to stay so lean so agile and so fast and cost effective at the same time by leveraging all of that yeah i mean i i, I wish there was a, a method to the madness but it, it's definitely you know we just kept our nose to the ground and uh just kept pushing along we're in the trenches you know to answer your other question on if our roles have changed, I don't feel that it necessarily has. We still, you know, Sean Verne and I, we have this kind of model where we just find a problem and we just throw our body on the landmine. And uh, by any, you know, we're rolling up our sleeves to help with that, that one issue. And we've always done that since the beginning. I think uh, the only thing that has changed is uh, we have a lot more support and a lot more people that are also helping us to get it finished. Um, and the problems have fundamentally amplified quite a bit uh, from <laughs> scope of problem or uh you know the dynamics of those problems have changed but but nonetheless it, we're, we're still the same same three guys doing the same things and you know luckily we have a great team supporting us and really they're doing the bulk of the work and we're super proud of them obviously as we you are... as you transition now into uh, into a phase where you're you know you you were three people and you've now got 650 people working for you and, and i'm sure that's going to keep growing as well uh, um, do you, you know, in, in those early days, you know, there are probably a bunch of sleepless nights there. Uh, do you, you know, does, does that still exist or are you generally working at a bigger picture level where that, that, that burden has gone? No, I, I mean, definitely early on, we, we've had a lot of superstars and all the superstars are still there. Um, we're now in a mode of how do we, you know, what I always call is celebritizing more of our internal team. We have highly talented individuals. Our early superstars have definitely moved up in the ranks in, in many ways. Um, 
within our community, within the organization, and just naturally within their skills. They've, they've just done an incredible job um, in growing in their careers. And so we want to make sure that they're being celebritized and we're coaching them to then create new versions of them as well. So it's, it's creating a multiplier effect, right? I, I want to have a world where there's 750, you know, talented, you know, Chase Buckners or, you know, <laughs> Mimi Rodriguez. I mean, we, we have so many talented names that it's how do we create more of those? And really, it comes down to those leaders. Right. We are getting some good questions here from people around the world. Um, Robert wants to say hello from Scotland, first of all. Uh, he, I think it's middle of the night for him. I know he has joined some of our lives that we do. Uh, and we appreciate you, Robert, for taking the time or waking up in the middle of the night to join us. Um, there are some questions. Would you mind if we went through some questions uh, for you? Okay. All right. And and I'll, I'm just going to start off by Alistair and I, uh, you know, we do really well in tech and we do really well in sales from the, the standpoint of selling a little bit differently than typical uh, uh, marketers do that I'll uh, call it that hide behind a computer screen. There are tactics and, and things that we utilize. Um, the one biggest thing that um, me as their sales coach has to talk them off the ledge on is that there are so many functions and features to not get overwhelmed by the functions and features and literally sell the outcome. So um, some of the questions uh, has to do with, you know, all of the features. And then some of the questions have to do with your personal preference and where you think you're going. So um, what are the in upcoming features that you are most excited about? Upcoming features that I'm excited about. That's a that's a tough one. So it, we've definitely changed our tune quite a bit in how we think about our product and where we're going. Uh, you know, we do get hit all the time. Man, you guys are just throwing out new features, new features, new features. And really what we're trying to do is we have our core set of features that everyone uses, right? Workflows, the CRM, the conversations. Uh, you know, we have this core set of features that yeah. everyone ties into. And really everything else is really to attack a new market to make sure that we have the it product for them so that they come in for that one feature. And then we push them back into the core functions there. And what I always tell people is I have no intention for you to use all 30 million products that we have. I need you to focus on five or six of them of right. really what brought you in and potentially hope hopefully with kind of our SaaS model and everything that we're doing there, you could potentially phase down a lot of your professional service and really help scale your business from a proven model that we've seen from other top agencies there. So really that's the model that, that we have. And, you know, when people ask about features, it's really paring down a lot of the functionalities. Uh, you know, we believe in the skateboard model. We're just rolling out features as people ask them for it. But now we, we've definitely changed our tune and we have a lot more product managers who are really the CEO of their independent products and they're sharpening their pencils on it, right? Like cleaning up the UIs, removing buttons, making it easier, making it tie into another aspect of the application a lot easier, integrating with other platforms. Uh, so more, think of it as we're doing a, a remodel under the hood, right? And no one can see see a lot of it. And that's really what I'm excited about because it's going to make you know everybody's experience a lot easier. So when you talk about the SMB, right, the, the local business, it's going to be easier for them to use the product on a day-to-day -day basis. It's going to be easier for the agencies to use the product so that they can support those SMBs. And tangentially for us at high level, it's going to be easier for us to support our customers because everyone is now using it in the same way, talking the same language and interpreting the out outcomes of it in the same way. And right now it's definitely across the board wide. And uh, so we're, we're trying to shore that up. Um, some other tactical features, I mean, our, our, our uh, communities feature, I mean, that we're getting a lot of buzz around that and a lot of people are excited about that functionality. Um, and, and I'm really excited to watch how people are going to translate that, not only from the online demographics, you know, the online entrepreneurs and stuff, they're really going to grasp onto that very quickly. We already know that. It's who are the agencies that can figure out how to flip that and give it to the dentist or give it to the, like, We've just seen some incredible stories of people taking our product and it was like, wow, that's awesome. I can't wait to see stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, AI, uh, we're embedding it in a lot of other places. And so, you know, st stuff that we're getting into is doing automated live chats with AI, um, getting into automated calling, creating IVRs. Um, I mean, we have a ton of just really cool features. 
that that's coming out the door, but kind of that same thing. Not everyone cares about everything. It, it's just, there's some people like, you know, we have a lot of agencies who are in the telecom space, right? They're answering services and stuff. Well, they're going to be interested in IVR and being able to do multi-call paths and routing and stuff like that. They probably aren't going to care about a lot of the SEO features that we're rolling out. <laughs> and we're building out a whole bunch of SEO features. And, and just to, put, to mystify things, our development team is about 225 people plus another wow. 30, 40 product managers. And think of those product managers as CEOs of their own independent product. And then on top of that, we have engineering managers and develop, you know, performance uh, on the infrastructure side. So we're a wide team. It's not like we're stretching our team thin and like 100% of the team focuses on another area. Everybody's kind of in their own micro team, really trying to develop their own little area. And that's how we're able to push so fast. Love it. Speaking of um, AI, uh, Robert says, I'm working with chat GPT three and a half, 3.5 using Zapier and high level. Currently high level doesn't use a memory key. Will this be a feature in the future? A hundred percent. And um, you, you know, you also mentioned chat GPT. Um, we're actually baking in chat GPT as well as other AI tools. Um, that's going to power that function. And what we're trying to do is figure out what is the best AI protocol for that function. So when we talk about image generation, we're, we're loading that in and we're actually testing out, you know, all the different AI uh, image tools and trying to figure out which one outputs the best. You know, a lot of them output six fingers. Well, we got to find the one that outputs five fingers. Um, and then, you know, when you talk about AI conversation, well, um, in certain instances, ChatGPT or OpenAI works a lot better um, at three, three and a half versus four, or BARD works better. And you know, when you get to math calculations, um, you know, when you do website generate, uh, content, you know, there's other ones that do a little bit better there. So we're trying to make it ubiquitous where we'll just call it, um, LC AI, but behind the engine, just know that we are paying attention to the output that comes in. And I we're going to, is and, and 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 I think as well, it's already solvable right now that that specific problem that uh, um, Robert's talking about because you just uh, attach the message body in the premium um, workflow um, that you're using there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and so we're we're trying to remove the friction points of not only content creation, image creation, website, and all that. So as an agency or even the SMB, you now have the ability to create it, but not only are you creating it, we want to make sure that it's high output and high, you know, efficacy. Um, a lot of times, you know, people, you, you heard it in the SEO world when open AI really started to blow up, it's going to be the death of blog writers or content writers. Well, and then a couple of weeks later, you know, <laughs> uh, it's just regurgitating what's already out on the internet. So <laughs> it's not really doing a great job. Um, and so we're, we're really trying to partner with the right companies and, and, uh, like I said, just pay, we're just paying attention to the output that's being delivered and want to make sure that it's going to put the agencies and the content creators in a strong light. Perfect. Um, Tyler comes up with a really good question. Um, if you had to start a marketing agency from scratch, what would that look like to you? What services would you offer? I would honestly just, uh, walk out my front door and find the closest business that I can walk into and talk to the owner and offer the basic services is free. I, I mean, I would basically just say, hey, can I just put this chat widget on your website? Can I uh, get your database and send out a text message? Can I set up the reputation management? And, uh, you know, can mm -hmm. I send out an email blast on your behalf? I, I would just focus on those couple of things for that small business. Because I know out of those five, four or five things that I would do, I could provide, I could show them that some results are coming in and I would do it for free and then, at the outcome of that, I'd ask for two things, either start paying me or give me another reference of someone who would pay me. And I would just start there. I mean, I, I always find it interesting when um, people out the gate are trying to offer something so complex that they can't even, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sink their teeth into and they're trying to sell it thinking that's the only way. And I think there's lower hanging fruit that you can win very quickly. I love that. And I love how you mentioned, listen up everybody, how he mentioned for your first couple of sales, walk out your door, actually go to a human and meet them in person. Don't try. The one thing that I always, um, <laughs> I'm constantly repeating myself is don't try to add all kinds of automation before you've actually made a sale. You need to understand the features and the functions yourself first and how to onboard somebody and how this actually works. 
before you kick in some automation to then have some higher sales opportunities. But listen, then he said, in person, you're going to get your sales in way faster in person than you are doing it digitally through any type of a message. You, you know, I've onboarded thousands and thousands of customers into high level. And it, it's interesting. There's two types of people. Well, there's three, actually three types of people. You have the one type of individual who comes in who I can't push forward until I know the ins and out of the tech. <laughs> and, you know, you kind of call those the, the academic scholars, right? You have to know mm -hmm. everything for school. You, you're ready for the test and you're, you can answer all the questions there. You're going to do extremely well. Then you have the sales individual who's like, just tell me the high notes of the product so I can go out to market. I don't care about the tech. And, and you have those individuals and, you know, you call, call those the, uh, the street smarts individual, right? And then you have the ones who are right in the middle where they need to know enough of the product to be, you know, more than dangerous, you know, where they're effective in it. They're able to talk about the product, but the nuance is actually paying attention to the sales process. And, you know, why it's important for me um, telling people to walk out to their front door it's you're going to be able to have a conversation with a business owner or a business leader. And immediately you'll not only be able to sell your product, but they're going to be very transparent on the challenges and products and experiences that they've had. So it's going to help you craft your offer in a very direct manner, you know, to hitting that pain point, as well as making sure that the solutions that you deliver is actually going to meet their needs. You want to meet them where they're at, not trying to prove that, hey, in the future, you're going to need this. It's no, I need help today. Here's how I'm going to help you win and find a solution to your problem now. Exactly. Boy, are the questions or comments coming in now. <laughs> so you're hitting a lot of, hit a lot of hot points. Uh, Alistair, do you want to read some off? Yep. Yep. Let me uh, um, get them. So um we got um you mentioned earlier about um high level version like 1.0 or whatever so what but uh, shane's asking what what high level version are we are we on now uh well we stopped keeping track of numbers a long time ago uh you know <laughs> it, it's it's still in beta i, I mean I, I don't even know right like we used to say for the longest time there's no such thing as you know with a singular product there's no such thing as a final product or a complete product it's Right, right, a work right. in motion. It's a, it's a living, breathing body, and we treat it as such, right? And um, with so many people working on, it, there's so many different arteries, there's so many different aspects into it that we're constantly making improvements and trying to make it better. Um, you guys, you guys keep keep adding more stuff. I think you'll never ever be be finished, even in a hundred years. Yeah, I, I mean, I I do think there's a end of the road in the sense of major, major life changing angles into it. I think we're just going to continue meeting people where they're at. What are the tools that you're needing to be successful? We're going to make sure that that's in there. Um, I think what's going to change, though, is how you operate, how you use it, how you can tweak it. And, you know, our intention isn't to make it feel like we're we're testing things out on our customers. Our intention is how do we make things easier, better and faster? And 90% of the time we hit, but we do have our moments where, you know, things don't work as planned or predicted when we do those releases, but just know that we're, we're watching and uh, we're trying to act as fast as possible. Yeah, totally. That, that, that's, that's awesome. Um, Jock is asking about, you mentioned earlier about SEO aspects that, that you're adding. Jock uh, has a big uh, SEO history. So he's uh, asking um, if you could maybe just go over a bit more details of the SEO yeah, yeah, we're definitely trying to um, work deeper in that angle. Um, a lot of it is centered around reputation management. Um, how can we make those signals, you know, translate back onto pages? Um, so we're focused on that area. Um, we're doing a lot, a lot of reporting tools that's coming out. And so we're in early discussions on what that could be, but, you know, providing real-time ranking reports, um, keyword analysis, um, you know, a lot of those tools that SEO agencies leverage we're, you know, baking those in. I know, you know, geo-targeting and um, maps, things of that nature is super important there. So we're, we're trying to figure out where and how we can place that in the app. Um, I, I would, you would start seeing a lot of those probably in Q1 and Q2 of next year, but we'll have some nice announcements at a summit with some drops that, that we're uh, going to surprise you with. 
Um, well, actually, that's that sounds also. I wonder if uh, um, you could tell us a, a little bit about the summit level up day. You obviously had your first one last year, and everyone was raving about it. Uh, but you know, I'm sure there were also things that you felt, hey, next time we've got to do a bit more of this, and we didn't have this, we should have that. Will you tell us a bit about what's uh, what's coming up and what's going to be better about it, even better than the the, the last one this year? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was definitely our first um, event that we hosted ourselves. It was um, something that we, you know, home grew. It was all of our team that that put it on together, which was really incredible. Uh, we didn't use an outside party or an outside team. We want, you know, we're big on our culture and who best to represent that culture from an event staff than our own team. Uh, you know, and we wanted to make sure that we were hitting the mark where customers want and expect, as well as some things that is unexpected that we've seen other in other um, events or things that, you know, we just wanted to pull out of our hat just to surprise people. Um, and so we wanted to, to make sure that the experience was phenomenal. Um, so last year, it, it was around the same time in October, um, we had incredible speakers and then we had our level up day, which we've historically done, but it's been virtual. And the level up day is where we do our product drops and announcements and roadmap, as well as, you know, our initiatives of the year and who we are. Um, and one of the things that I was super proud of is that we really gamified an experience of uh, donating to a local nonprofit. And uh, we were able to cut them a, you know, a nice check in, in three days um, that we then matched. And actually the cool thing about it is that nonprofit got a lot of exposure on the back end and other people in our community did follow up events and donated even more money to them. So, so being able to have that, you know, effect in our local community means a lot and, and shows the impact that us as agencies and SaaSpreneurs are able to do it is really amazing. Um, for this year, um, you know, we're definitely in a mission to top ourselves from an experience perspective. We uh, last year we we threw awesome parties, had big speakers, and you know had robots and all sorts of craziness there. So um, we're doing a little bit of a similar model in the sense of um, you know we have top talented speakers from other industries as well as. Um, within high level, majority of the speakers, I would say about 98% of them use and live by high level today. So a lot of experience. That's an important aspect. That's an important aspect. The, I think that's really key. So even some of these big top, top names that people have heard of, 98% of the speakers uh, are, are using high level. So they, they're not just a speaker that's just come in, but they're a speaker that understands the product and the audience. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, you'll elbow rub with them, you know, they'll be walking through the hallway and stuff and they're, they're geeking out just as much as uh, everyone else there attending. And the last 2%, you know, a lot of them are migrating to high level and, and trying to get there. They're just not as proficient today, but in some of them, you know, we're, we're trying to get them into that world, but really majority of the speakers, you know, we wanted to make sure that they understood why they're there and who we are and who our customers are that, that we're serving. Um, so that that's going to be great. We're going to have parties um, every day, and the idea is to to top it out. We're going to do a callback to one of the parties that we did last year. It's kind of it's kind of like this is the new baseline, and then we go better from here. We have some uh, surprises in store there, um, amazing food, um, and just make it a phenomenal experience. Uh, we know that it's a big investment. We know that we're taking time out of everyone's business and growing it, and we want to make sure that you're getting the education, you're getting the value, and and time. Um, really to sharpen sharpen your your knife at, as, in being a SaaSpreneur. Um, and so we want to make sure that you get all the tools, the ideas, the the concepts, as well as where the future is going for us as being your operating system. And so that, that's really our focus. Yeah, that, it sounds like it's just going to be a truly, truly awesome event again. Uh, yeah. um, thank you. Um, could you talk to us a little bit about the um, future um, aspects of high level and where it's going? I think um, a, a lot of um, a, lo a lot of us that that use high level have uh, been drawn in by your by the, the the key leadership and the and the personalities there. Uh, are, you, are you guys in this for the long term? Where's all, all that going to go? I, I think it was about. A year ago, you did a funding round where you, I think, raised about 60 million and there were questions asked whether price is going to be raised. Are you guys looking to exit? Uh, um, you, there's, there's, there's talk about other funding rounds happening. Uh, where, is, uh, where is all this going? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, I'll, I'll preface it as I, I don't 
predict the future by any means, you know, like I, we're, we're definitely in the trenches, just doing what we love every day, which is helping customers talking about the product, being in the product, using the product ourselves. I mean, that that's who we are. And, and, you know, Sean Vernon and me, that that's, we live and die by it. I mean, it's who we are and it's, it's what defines us. Right. Um, you know, as far as us taking that round in 2021, it was the height of the market. Um, and we just wanted to learn what it meant. I mean, you have a, you know, we have a growing SaaS company, other SaaS companies are making, you know, huge exit rounds and crazy rounds. So let's just see what happens. And, you know, we can always say no. And, uh, the idea is we didn't want to change the business by any means. So who wants to join us for the party? And, um, so we went through that process in 2021 and it was definitely interesting and eye-opening and it allowed us, um, an opportunity to get insight in how people think about valuing businesses and us now really becoming an operating system, empowering others to start a software business on top of us. We're now able to give proper advice. And actually a lot of the way that we've built our product is through the learnings that we had through that, that model. Now we know what investors are looking for, what's important to them. Right, 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 when right. people ask these questions, you know, what are the provisions? What are the terms? How is the product scaled so that somebody else can build their business on top of it and actually make it, you know, acquirable for somebody else or even, you know, an investor or something else? So we learned a, a huge amount through that process. Um, you know, around the corner, I have no idea what that holds. Uh, you know, we have no intention of disappearing. We built an incredible moat of how we grew our business, and it makes us very um, unique in that perspective. So, which in some ways makes us untouchable because as an investor, you want to jump in, sprinkle in your special sauce into that business to help grow it to the next level. But because we've done it in such a unique way, word of mouth, using agencies to, um, you know, grow the platform, it's very unique and, and you know, allowing you to white label no other company allows you, Alistair, you know, to, to throw your label on there and never represent the underlying tech, right? Like it's such a unique way. So in many ways, a lot of investors shy away when they look at our business. Um, that being said, you know, if anything happens, I, I think it's more in the sense of helping us continue to grow. And I'd love to be in a world where we can, um, you know, be public or something like that to where our customers can can reap the benefits and be a part of that, that process. Um, short of me just saying that, I have no idea what I just said or what it means, but it sounded great. And I'd love to, for everyone to, to share the wealth with us. Well, uh, well, I think it's great. I, I, I think you have, you, you know, there's this concept of a thousand true fans, and I think you have way more than a thousand true fans. And, and you know, as, as you look to the, the future and future funding rounds, it would be, I think it would be awesome if um, you were able to somehow, maybe it's through crowdfunding or maybe it's through some direct opportunity for 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 those of us that that have been behind you for some time and love what you do to be able to invest in you know I, I crunched a couple of numbers you know if you in you know you you obviously need to make it worth your while and of course you know through through us you're not going to raise 100 200 300 million but you but you, but you could raise you know what one to five from us and have us even further deeply invested you know even if you said hey are there 100 people that will give us 10 grand or yeah. uh, or, or, or are there 250 people that would give us five grand there you go that's one to one to five million you could you could raise in a week yeah um, I, I think you know I'm personally not a fan of uh you know taking people's money for the sake of people's money and not knowing what I could output on it which is why we we love the SaaS model because I'd rather you just pay us to help keep our development moving Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that we're enabling you to make lots and lots of money on your side uh, in a safe and predictable way. Uh, you know, one of the, the messages that, that we're strong on is we really want to create a $10 billion economy, you know, $9 billion um, that SaaSpreneurs and our agencies are making. And we, you know, because we're doing such a great job, maybe we'll make a billion dollars uh, on the back end. And, you know, maybe that's within five years, maybe that's within 10 years, but we really do believe it's that. And what was fun, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of prep work for, for the summit and I got some preliminary numbers and we're close to a billion dollars that agencies have made in 2023 alone. Wow. Amazing. Uh, I, I had the team fact checking it. Because it's <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's some of the preliminary numbers that's out there. It is insane just to hear that, you know, on the back of our platform, 
and and, and 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 that's just a bit that you have access to. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of stuff in the in the in the back end that you don't have the oh, data yeah, for on, on top of that. The way that I've asked the team to pull the number is whatever is directly attributable that we can fact check and verify is what I want them to pull. And that's the first number that they sent to me. And I was like, please double check that, triple check that, because I don't want to be on stage saying the wrong <laughs> number. But the right. fact that we're even close or even remotely talking about that number is insane and amazing. And I'm, I'm just part, happy to be a part of that journey with others. Yeah, that is it. That, that is so cool. And, and, and I think um, the, the interesting thing is that you know there's some people talk about it's a market saturated or what sort of thing and, and and i think absolutely not i think you are still you know you're what five five years old but i still think you're in your infancy i think there are still so many businesses so many marketing businesses so many potential SaaS SaaS businesses out there that have never yet still heard of your brand let alone what it does and, and everything that i think there is so much potential plus there are the others that have heard that just haven't come over yet that people still use click funnels and uh you know all these kinds of software that are obsolete uh um well know, hey guys i just want to be cognizant of the time we've got about 13 minutes left and we've got a couple more questions that have come in and i know robin we've only carved down an hour so i just want to be cause cognizant to make sure we answer everybody's question uh yeah you're, you're talking about i actually uh canceled my couple of meetings for the rest of the afternoon so i have all the time if you guys want to keep oh. going i'm here too. let's go let's go <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I love it, love it. Yeah, um, no, you know, the other all right. they're, they're all Go great. I, I think, um, you know, everyone is working hard and everyone's doing great things out in the world. And I think that's that's the role that as software creators and implementers is the focus. Are we providing impact to our communities? And, you know, whether you want to 100% move over to us because we have the right tools for you, or if you just want to use us for a part of it, um, we integrate with everybody. And, and that's really, you know, how we look at it. Uh, I think it's just when people ask about market saturation, I don't think the world is looking for yet another CRM. I, I think it's, you know, are you able to be a solutions provider, finding people's problems and creating solutions for them? And that's why I love working with agencies because they are the ones that are finding problems and creating, you know, plugging that gap. I think there's also other other CRMs that's been around, you know, and they've done an incredible job, but they've been around for so long that they were implemented by a different generation of team members. They're way antiquated. Right. And maybe they've made up, <laughs> maybe they've changed um, over time, but the, the team that owns that product and using it, they haven't changed. And that, you know, the new incoming team that's using it is stuck with an archaic implementation. Yes. And so there's huge opportunity for new teams to come in and, you know, migrate away and build almost the new operation for the, the new team that's come on. So I think it's a wide open world. And another interesting, sorry, I'm a fact kind of guy. Uh, interesting stat, uh, pre-COVID, um, I think the number was like four and a half million new businesses or new entities created every year here in the United States. Since COVID, the numbers accelerated and I think they're estimating close to 6 million or 7 million new entities being created in 2023. So mm -hmm. on the bottom end, we're st I'm personally seeing a lot of people who worked for different businesses. Let's go to local route. You have a plumber, um, you know, maybe that 13 trucks, 13 plumbers who are driving these trucks. A lot of those people working for that big plumbing company are now start breaking out, getting their own truck and starting their own business. And it might be just the, a guy in a single truck or a woman in a single truck going out into our local city, but they now need the tech help. So they're always looking for marketing agencies or marketing professionals to help with their, their problems. So I think the opportunity is just starting and mostly with the new solutions that, you know, we're, we're enabling other people to deliver is huge. And, and now's the time. Perfect. Um, we have Cesar or Cesar, I think it's Cesar from Qatar. Uh, he has a question here as a co-founder, what are some of the non-obvious ways you've seen agencies use GHL to grow their business? Non-obvious. Non-obvious. I've seen people leverage, uh, so during uh, COVID, there was a lot of businesses that were slowly moving back into the office and people were using it as a check-in, check-out system and, mm. and also reporting systems. I thought that was pretty unique. Um, it's being used as a dispatching application. So you can uh, dispatch drivers. Think of, uh, so Uber released a new feature where you can uh, call for a driver to pick up a package and deliver it. Well, you need to be able to communicate with the driver back and forth and, you know, High level can can do that. 
um, in the automotive space, I've seen someone create a live um, auto auction platform. So people can aggregate multiple car bidding applications, injecting it into one source, and then through AI and chat on the conversations page, respond back and uh, do bids on cars. Like I, there's, there's just a random use cases that's out there, but it, it's it's cool that we're a platform and just every time I get on a call with a customer, it's something different. Is there, I, I, um, Joanne is asking, is there a repository for the case studies like this? Uh, is Or if there's not, can you start one with case studies of how people have utilized things for all of us to be able to refer to? That's a great idea. I haven't even thought of it. I'll, uh, no, no. Put it we, on the board. Yeah, no, 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 I'm thinking about it in my head. How do we pull that off? Because that's a- or, or you can have us that have had success creating our own, you know, um, you know, put a little app in with our scenario and then, you know, you can allow it take that and just populate it onto a funnel somewhere that people can yeah, go. Uh, like. Maybe, maybe it's um for whoever does your 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 blogs, maybe it's a blogging thing that they could also, you know, they could interview the agencies that have done all these things that you that you see and write up a little blog case study and then you could have a you know, a section in your, in your blog that is these, these case studies. And I'm just yeah. thinking, thinking out loud. We, we've done that um, in the past. And I, I think it's something that we need to amplify and make it more of a repository. We used to do, well, we still do it. It's called client spotlight sessions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, you did one with me. Yeah. And, and those <laughs> go really well. they, yeah. they go really well. Um, but, you know, to the, to answer the question of, do we have a repository? If we do, that'd be the closest we have, but it's not good. And I that's not an area that we can improve on. Can you like, hire us? We'll start one for you. We'll get it started. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk after the call. How about that? We'll just bolt on. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. But, but I, I think that would be good, particularly when we, you know, like we're talking to a lot of people that are interested in building and or scaling their SaaS business. And I think having those case studies of how people have done it differently, you know, of course, and, and, and I do believe some of the stuff that we we're talking about earlier about just being simple and you don't have to go down 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 that route and just start with missed call text back or chat widget or you know a couple of those things um but you know there are definitely people that want to start out and take it to the next level and want to do that next thing and want to hear about those things whoa so i could do that um that check-in thing and i know some businesses that 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 need that and this is how they did it and how i could do that well, okay i'm in i'm doing that you know or or, or something right. i think that would be yeah. really cool no, that's a great idea. I'm going to, I'm going to run that down and see what we can pull off. Yeah. Nice, nice. I, I just right. thought of some other things as well. Okay. Uh, perfect. Uh, let's see here. We've got a couple more. Steve Rock says, is there a plan to streamline the process of making sure email deliverability is on point? Here we go. Um, I spend a significant amount of time researching solutions to issues like this. It would be so helpful to be able to utilize the features without concerns for potential problems. By no means am I criticizing, as I know there are lots of people working hard, exclamation point. Yeah, um, email deliverability is a beast in itself. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a press this button, do this, and then therefore you will always get perfect inbox deliverability in the primary box. Uh, that being said, you know, we're toying around with some ideas when we're making some changes in the product to to help improve it. I don't necessarily think that it's going to be the end all be all solution into it because it starts getting into very similar to A2P 10 DLC on the text messaging side. Well, you can try to improve it from a systems perspective, but then they're going to say, well, it's still spam. So now we're starting to read the messages and it's about the characters that's in there or the subject line and stuff like that. Um, so we're gonna leverage AI in some aspects behind it, see if we can help improve um, deliverability from that aspect. Um, and then potentially, you know, offer premium services where if you wanna send out from a high deliverable rate, you know, like say you wanna send out a million emails in a shorter amount of time, we'll have um, dedicated servers to handle that and basically do, you know, IPs or multiple IPs to be able to send it out, um, potentially have professional services that, um, monitor and maintain it, you know, from a proactive measure. Um, so those are some ideas that we're toying around with. Nothing necessarily committed, um, short of the, making sure that from a systems perspective, it is behind the scenes set up for every user out the gate that it should work, you know, get you to 70%, 80% um, resiliency to getting to the inbox. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, let's see here. 
interesting use cases would love to know them all too <laughs> um too. let's see it would be awesome it would be awesome to read all of that or have little video snippets of how people are doing something i love that um I think we should be able to add notes, metadata in the white space and workflows. Oftentimes when I get back to a workflow, I can't remember what I was thinking when I created the workflow. Just an idea there, or maybe something's coming up on that. That is actually on the roadmap. So the ability to create um, notes at a global level. So when you save, uh, you can put kind of, you know, create a change log. Uh, and I want to say that I saw some screens where you could actually do it at a, a step level as well. Um, create notes and, you know, hey, I made a change here, moved it down or whatever, or just, hey, in the future, I want to change the messaging to this, just hold it here for now, and maybe I'll come back to it later. Um, so that's definitely in the roadmap. I don't have a no, timeline on it, but I, I have seen some screens on that. No, okay. That's very cool. Uh, everybody's saying thank you, thank you, thank you for all your answers, great answers. Um, I have a question, though, because you have been recently approved for WhatsApp. What is the utilization of WhatsApp? Are we adding it to the chat widget? Is it going to be a communications um, thread as well? You know, all of the above? Yeah, yeah. So WhatsApp is definitely, it's been a fun process. So last year, <laughs> last level up day, we were about a week away from releasing it out. And actually on level up day, we did say that it is going live next week. Uh -huh. As soon as we got that announcement is when Twilio started putting out all the messaging about 10 DLC, ATP registration, and they are now stopping all new businesses from getting on WhatsApp because they're shifting their whole focus to, you know, the registration fiasco that that's happening now. Um, so we were hit and we had to split our teams who were focusing on all communications. Now it's like, hey, we need a WhatsApp team um, to focus on how to roll that out as well as the communications team. And at that point, we also determined we needed to create LC lead connector so that we can pass on discounts to our customers. So we had all these things happening internally. At that point, I got really frustrated and I started just poking the bear and started calling. Like I, I was literally on LinkedIn trying to message anybody and everybody at Meta. Somebody talk to me. I, I just need to go straight to the source. Somebody can get me uh, WhatsApp access. And finally got a hold, um, hold of a few people and they referred me and just turned into a long-winded thing. Um, and it was in January where I finally had official meetings with um, executives at, at Meta. He's like, okay, we're going to figure something out. We're going to make it work. And then they told us by March, we would be able to sign agreements. And then they had their massive layoffs. Uh, and I started Sorry. panicking at that time because I was like, the reps that they assigned us to, I hope they didn't leave. And we were nervous because those reps actually were on vacation during mm -hmm. that period. And they finally came back two weeks later. I was like, oh my God, thank you. Because I was panicking. I was like starting the process all over again. Uh, and then it went another two or three months because they were basically telling us, look, we lost a lot of our team. We're having to restructure, rebalance the teams, get the right legal in place to push this forward again. And it wasn't until June 1st that we actually signed the agreement. July 1st is when they announced their new pricing model. Um, so what's up? for businesses actually is a pay-per-use model only mm -hmm. charged by WhatsApp. We're not going to be charging anything for it. Um, or, you know, and we're trying to figure out how to make that work because there's some implications with WhatsApp on that. Um, we're probably about less than a month away from actually dropping it um, and having it available for everyone. And it's going to be something that's going to be just another communication channel. So just like you have Facebook Messenger, just like you have um, Instagram DMs, SMS, email, you'll see a new one for WhatsApp. Um, and we're going to make it to where it can work with a chat widget. You can um, be selective on, on the use case. And, and we always get the pushback of why are we even chasing out WhatsApp because it's not popular. Um, but really, those individuals who put that are in the oh States. Gosh. And WhatsApp is it's not so popular. <laughs> but internationally, it is the method of communication. And um, I it's think it's becoming it, more popular in the States. It is slowly growing and it's going to quickly grow, in my opinion. You, yeah, and you didn't hear from me, but you know, we we've gotten, you know, we gotten the feelings from Meta that they're trying to create more of a, a unified communications tool. Um, and so it may not be called WhatsApp in the future, or maybe mm. it's going to be called WhatsApp and they phase down everything else. But basically, mm. it's as an individual, you'll have just one communication link that basically integrates with all their different channels that they have. 
um, and WhatsApp, or at least the infrastructure behind WhatsApp will be the center force. At least that's my prediction and kind of reading through the lines and what they're telling us um, is what it looks like. Um, so WhatsApp will become mainstay very soon. I love that. I love that. Um, well, we have hit the top of the hour. A couple of people more, are more commenting. Is there anything else that you wanted us, our folks to know um, of something from your perspective? Is there something that you would like to share specifically? Because uh, I know you're almost sold out for your for your events. Tickets are almost sold out for that. I think that's happening in October. And hint, hint, we, we found out we were getting an award. Um, <laughs> so we're trying to make trying to make something happen that we can attend, unsure of that. But um, is there anything that specifically that you really want to help us, all the people that are utilizing your creation? Is there something from your heart that you want to share with us? Um, you know, what I always tell everybody is just continue to keep it simple. Um, you know, the, the simpler that you kind of, you know, help your customers provide them results, you'll win. And it creates an amplified effect to your community. And, um, you know, that, that's as crazy as crazy as uh, inspirational okay. that you'll get out of me. But uh, OK, OK, we, we'd love to uh, have you, everybody be a part of our event. Uh, you know, we're there. We're not hiding by any means. We're, we're walking. We're, we're in the crowds. We're going to be talking to, you know, I want to shake everyone's hand that's there. Um, you know, everyone says, you know, Chandra and I are, are really the, the ones of high level and we disagree 100%. It's really our community that makes high level, um, as unique as possible. Um, we're just the, the nerdy tech guys behind the scenes that, that love the code program and talk about the product all day long. Um, but mm -hmm. it's our community, what, what makes us special. And it's, it's one of a kind and something that we want to continue cultivating and growing. Um, so if you do have the opportunity and time to be there, we'd love to have you and um, show you a great time. Excellent. Well, um, let me just see if there's any last little questions, but I thank you so much for allowing us to have an hour of your time. No, thank you today. for that. Yeah, no, it's, it's been awesome. While, while Amy looks at, at, at those questions, and, and, and I know this is, uh, every day is going to be different for, the, for this question, but could you, could you give us a day in the life of what you do? Uh, um, and I, I, you know, and I, I know yesterday was probably different than than right now, and tomorrow will will, will be different. But could you could you, could you tell us what that looks like? Yeah, I mean, if, if there's not a lot of complexity to it, I mean, I, I normally wake up around four or five, hit the gym, and then it's start getting on conference calls with our product team in the morning. You know, team calls in the you know late mornings, and then it's just from there, just talking to customers. You know, whether it's down to onboarding, getting on the Facebook group, trying to pull when people are you know, getting frustrating, you know, running the frustrating problems or complaints, I'm messaging them, hey, give me your ticket number and I'll chase it down or try to escalate it or, hey, let's jump on a Zoom call, I'll figure it out with you. Uh, it's all the way that until about, can't, that I can't do it anymore for the day. <laughs> and it's uh, head on home, pick up dinner, eat with the family nice. and uh, spin cycle I, every day. <laughs> I think, uh, I, I, I think that's awesome. And I, and, and I think even though, you know, you've got what, you know, you, you're running a business with 650 employees, you're still troubleshooting down at, at that, at that customer level, because it, it, you know, not just do you, you know, making them feel special, uh, you know, because someone at your level is getting in there and trying to help them solve it, but it keeps you having that deep understanding of the pain points that you're, that, 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 that all of us, uh, you know, that, uh, have as well. Awesome. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I like to think that we don't necessarily have, I mean, of course you have, you know, organizational levels just from a reporting structure, but from a day-to-day -day operations, we're all doing the same thing. We're all on the same mission. So there is no ego or prima donna, you know, ideas here. If you reach out to me, of course, I'm going to re reply back. Why wouldn't I? Or, you know, if you want to meet, of course, I'd jump on a call with you. Why wouldn't I? Um, yeah. and, and I think that that's really the culture that we're trying to breed here at high level. And so, Anytime that we hear otherwise, we we take it very seriously and we try to remedy it because that, that's not who we are and um, what we're about. But yeah, there, there's there's no difference between today and tomorrow. It's just a spin cycle of just helping as many people as possible. Love okay, it. we Love got it. one last one. La I'm sorry to say. Okay, by the way, I just put a comment in. Everybody hang on. If Robin leaves, you need to hang on. We have a huge announcement of a something that you guys have been begging us for that's upcoming. So we're going to announce that. But um, Joanne is asking one last so solution maybe you can help us with. 
I need events and event registration, check-in for members and guests, and samples of what is possible for communities and memberships. Is that available anywhere? Send me an email and or message me, however, you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Just reach out to me and I'll, I'll send you some details on communities and memberships. And uh, you can play around with it and see some demo videos and stuff. Uh, I think next week they'll actually be released. I'm pretty sure that that's what we we just decided on the call right that's actually why I was late here because we were actually talking about that we were trying to determine oh. is it ready to go so I got super sucked into that call uh but uh I think next week is really the timeline that we're going to try releasing um private groups and things of that nature um in regards to events um I'd love to see your use case I'll show you what we're doing um and even get our events team and how they're handling it because they're using high level and, and that's really our mantra in-house it's uh we used to say we, we eat our own dog food but we've been told that's not the best term so it's uh we eat our own cake and uh so we try to use it every single way possible and i'd love for you to see how we use it as well as other tools that we integrate with um and if you have additional use cases maybe we can throw that into the the roadmap i think Excellent. i think this, i think this is awesome on both of those points the private groups um coming out is going to be awesome and from the event perspective i think there's um a, a lot that can already be done with within high level and tagging people and you know using qr codes and um to to bring people into workflows and tr trigger links and you know all of that stuff uh, i think there's a, a a lot that can already be be built out and done this but but it's awesome we we all love Robin, everything that you guys have done and built and continue to do and um and how fast you update, make, make, make changes. You know, we came we came in four, four and a half years ago when triggers and campaigns are what we came in for for the follow-up automation, which is exactly why you why you started it. And then and then the funnel builder, you know, this huge project came came out and you know, every every everything else, you know, high level doesn't look remotely close to what it looked like when 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 Amy and I first started. It's interesting that 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 you onboarded Amy, Sean onboarded me. <laughs> uh, um uh, and you know going 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 on from there. But it but it's awesome. Thank you so much for everything that you've done, for everything that you continue to do uh um with it all and and for you know you I, I think you've downplayed some of what you do, but for you know carving out uh you know now over over an hour to spend time and talk to us when when i i know you're you've got a lot on your plate and a lot going on um thank you thank you so much uh, no thank you for yeah. having me uh i'm i'm gonna sneak over and uh watch the big announcement that you guys have you guys uh oh hey coming oh, up right. yeah 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 no feel free yeah. to feel feel free to stay uh we just we don't want to don't want to take up you know any 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 more of your time Oh, no, no. Well, thank you guys for having me. You, what you guys are doing is incredible and, uh, you know, serving a, a great community and, um, you know, congratulations on winning a, an award. And thank I hope you. you guys are there too. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. All right, All right, Alistair, I'm going to put you front and center here and you can, oh, thanks. Oh, uh, what, what just happened? There we go. Um, All right. Okay. So uh, um, you guys have asked and asked and asked. We've been, we've been really upfront in the the profit pact about no tricks, no scams, no upsells, and that's one of the things that uh, that I that I say to everybody. And so we try not to have anything where we uh, um, are charging you guys for. But you know, at some point, you guys ask for other other products, other things, and you've specifically been asking about Facebook ads and how to run that. So we're running a Facebook ads masterclass. It's on next week, and there is a very, very, very small payment for you to pay to one to get access to the live Facebook ads masterclass to two um get the recording um uh, and then there's a there's a third bit that i mentioned a minute so if anybody is interested in facebook ads masterclass we're running that we've carved out two hours if it ends up being an hour and a half it'd be an hour and a half if it ends up being two and a half then he will go on as well included in that is you know assuming about 30 minutes of of questions we want everybody who comes here to go away with that understanding and we're going from scratch from setting up a business manager um the food and an ad account facebook page um, which some of you come in this will already know some of you won't uh um and through all the way to getting to ad accounts to audiences to um then integrating with high level and uh um how to set up and do the conversion the facebook conversions api so you know if, if you recall all this ios issue and blocking pixels and all that sort of thing what that does is it allows us in the back end to send information back to Facebook. So massively reduce our ad costs because we get the conversions going through. So we're going to go through 
all of that stuff in this masterclass. There's going to be a recording. Uh, we will drop a link for you to sign up. It is on, I forget, is it Monday or Tuesday next week? Um, we've asked yeah. you guys to save the date. The eighth. But, it, it, yeah, um, but, but it, it's there. So you, so you can come and get, um, come live. You can come and get the recording. If you can't be there live, you need to sign up to get the live to get the recording uh, um, as well. And, and then I'll be honest with you, on the funnel, there is an upsell, but it's an upsell that's uh, only for a small percentage of you. What that upsell is, is basically for anybody who hasn't got the 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 profit pack, all of our training, everything, because you've signed up under a different affiliate, so you just can't get it. So you just can't get it. There, we're offering that for 75% off. So instead of two thousand dollars, it's five hundred. Well, four ninety seven. Um, so you, so if you want to get all of that stuff for seventy five percent off, you need to come and sign up for the Facebook Ads Masterclass as well, and we will give you that special deal um, in the upsell. And for those of you, which is most of you that have already got access to the profit pack, there's a button right at the top of that upsell page that says, "This doesn't apply to me. Skip here." So just click that that skip button. So I just want to be completely upfront with everybody, um, show you um, everything that that is there, and to go and get it. So um, there's a video on the page. It tells you about it. Um, uh, and oh, a Amy, Amy has dropped that and pinned that to this Facebook Live. Um, so anyone's um, got that there. So um, so go and get that. Uh, any questions, any comments about that, feel free to um, drop that in the chat and we'll quickly answer that right now. Any other questions, any other final bits uh, for us, feel free to do that. The, the landing page isn't pretty. It's just got a, a quick video. None of that. We just um, we decided to put our time and effort into making sure that the masterclass is awesome. We're not here to make thousands and thousands of dollars out of it, as you can tell by the fact that, you know, you know it's so cheap um, for what it is. We will be going on to sell this, guys. We're going to be going on to um, sell this as a product later on for $4.97. Um, so if you are remotely interested in this, then one, I suggest you um, sign up for the masterclass, but secondly, sign up to get the recording as well, because it's going to be you know what uh you know, more than 10 it's times 19 dollars um, yeah, 19 it's, bucks it's, it's, it's 19 dollars to come mm -hmm. um but so if you are remotely interested in any way considering we're going to be selling the recording for 497 in the future uh i suggest you jump in now now this isn't for everybody if you have no interest in running facebook ads uh um if you're just starting out on the 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 profit pact in your SaaS journey you are, do i need this the answer is no uh um, this is for because so many people have asked, do you want to do this? This is an add on service that people potentially want to do. You We've been asked for years to, to provide yeah. this. <laughs> you don't need this to be successful from a SaaS perspective at all. But if you also want this, if you want this as well, um, then that's what this is about. So I'm not here to hard sell anybody. A whole bunch of you have been asking for a long, long time for this. So that's why we're doing this. If this is for you, then that's awesome. If that's not for you, then that's absolutely fine too. Uh, um, no, no problem either way, but please, you know, head over to that landing page, click the link. Uh, and make uh, sure you out carve out at least seven. two hours. Yeah. At least two hours, because, you know, we're going to literally going, be going step by step. And not only potentially can the Facebook ads be for you and client getting, if you want to upsell something as a service, not only sell your SaaS platform, but also provide lead generation or sales generation for your clients who you do that, this is the training for that as well. So um, again, if you don't want anything to do with Facebook ads, don't do it. But so many people have been asking us, it's finally here. We finally carved out the time. We're literally doing it live. So any questions, any nuances, you know, we can change up as we go, but um, we want to make sure that you guys are always successful in whatever we help you do. Yeah, thank you. Robert, as well, I'm just seeing your comment. Very happy to pay you guys. Always give high quality training. Thank you. Um, we appreciate that that comment as well. So um, guys, go check it out. Uh, I, I definitely recommend that if you're somebody who wants it, then you like the, the order bump on the page is to get the recording. I definitely recommend you take take the recording as well, because you know if you're somebody that wants this training, at some point you're going to want to refer back to it and go, hey, how did they find that audience again? Or what was that thing I had to click to do the uh, um, the Facebook conversions API or whatever it is, and, and you get access to that. And that's just 
tiny order bump and I forget how much it is now, but it's not very much at all. Uh, um, honestly, uh, um, you know, we probably should be, well, we are going to charge a lot more, but hey, we wanted to offer it to you, to you guys first at this special, special deal. So um, anyway, there we go. Um, right. I'm not going to labor the point now. And you guys have been here with us live, for, you know, what an hour and a quarter or so. Um, so thank you so, so much for joining us. If that's something for you, then that's great. Hopefully you got a lot of value out of Robin and everything he said as well. And um, I have tech zoom room um, in a few hours. So please guys come and join me on tech zoom room as well. Hi guys. Thanks so much for joining. Bye, Make everyone. sure you pay attention and join the zooms. Stop missing the Zooms. This is your key to your success. Make sure you join Alistair in a couple hours. See ya. Bye.